Good afternoon from Okinawa, Japan, home of Okusubis. Today we're going to do the tuning video and we're going to show you what you need and also how to download and upload the ROM from your ECU. This is going to be for 16-bit ECU specifically. This is going to be for a Cori's car. Um, if you guys haven't seen the Cori build, the XT build in the end, we talk about we're going to be doing the series for tuning. So check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But the uh, what you need first, um, what you're going to need is first you're going to need a Tatrix cable. Uh, you can go to uh, the web, any website. You, you can go online and pick up a, a Tatrix cable. They're about 200 bucks, but you need it's an OBD2 style 2.0 Tatrix cable here. Um, but yeah, you need this. And then the Subarus have a jumper. Uh, the newer models and the older models are just a single jumper, but you basically take this and you plug it inside underneath the dash. I'll show you where to do that. Um, and you also will need some type of AFR gauge system, like a wideband setup, so you can actually check your AFRs and make sure that everything is good to go. Um, so the physical aspect, this is pretty much what you need besides a laptop. Um, once you get the laptop, you're going to have to download ECU Flash and also ROM Raider. Both are free programs and you'll need those. ECU Flash is used to pull the ROM or the data from your ECU and to install it. ROM Raider is to log the adjustments made on the map. So when you're doing an e-tune, typically what you're doing is you're, you're pulling the ROM from your ECU and then you're going to tell your tuner, I've done this with, you know, I have this turbo, I have this injectors, downpipe, whatever you have done to, to your car. And he's going to make adjustments on the map and he's going to send it to you via email. And you're going to take that file, save it onto your computer, and you're going to use your computer and these, this stuff here to upload it into your map. You're going to start the car and you're going to use ROM Raider to data log it. And your tuner will tell you, for example, an idle log, a drive log, and then after a couple of revisions from there, he's going to tell you to do a wide open throttle log. Um, so we've done this so many times. We use Shinji Tuned. Um, you can look him up on Facebook, You'll um, and he can get you set up with your E-Tunes also. But this is basically what you need to get it started. So I'll take this equipment. We'll go ahead and go inside uh, Corey's car here and kind of show you the process of, of how to First, pull your, your ROM from the actual ECU. All right, so now we're back uh, inside the car here, and you first need to determine which one of these you'll need. Um, if it's like a Blob Eye or Forrester XT, a lot of the times it's this one right here. Usually, a lot of the times the Bug Eyes, the earlier models will have these ones right here. Um, and then you also have to look for the green connectors underneath the dash. All right, so this is underneath the car, the green connectors right there. Um, and then you have the actual jumper right there. And you have the OBD2 port. So basically what's the reason behind this jumper is if you look at the actual wire diagram, what happens is it goes from the OBD2 connector to this little connector over here, this little, little jumper, and then it goes to your ECU. And what you're doing is you're making a connection from the OBD2 port to the ECU. Uh, when we do like the merges, we actually, we delete it. We go straight through so you don't have to use this anymore. Like Cobb access ports, you plug this in, you keep it in there the whole time. Like there's no reason to unplug it and plug it back in. So we just kind of adapted that into our merges and we get rid of it. So if you have a merged GCA by Okisubis, all you got to do is plug in the green connectors and turn ignition on. But let me show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and plug this up now that you've seen it. So we have the jumper plugged up right there. And then we have the green connectors hooked up right there. So when you do that, the green connectors, if you looked at our la uh, the videos about the diagnostics and and whatnot, you'll hear the relay. So with it plugged in right now, you're gonna start to hear all the fans and the relays are gonna start to work, right? So you have to plug those green ones up to pull the ROM. So now what we're gonna do is take the Tetrix cable, plug it up. Then if you look right here, go onto the computer, you'll notice that nothing is, is being highlighted right here. When you hook it up to your car, 
and your Tatrix cable has power, you'll notice that now this piece is blue, or this, this little logo is blue. So now what we do is we, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you right now how to pull the ROM from your ECU. So if you want your stock map, you click that. And if you see right here, if your ignition is already on from a previous operation, press, press OK. Otherwise, connect the green test mode connectors under your dash. Turn your ignition on and quickly press OK. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click to ignition on and click OK. And you can see it's entering into flash mode. Right, and if you notice right now, I'm going to take you over to the front of the car real quick. As it's flashing, even though the green connectors are plug plugged up, there are no relays being activated. Your fans are not going on and off or anything. It's nice and, and quiet, right? That means you have successfully gone into flash mode and you're pulling the ROM successfully. If you start that ignition on and your, and your relays and your fans start clicking, it's either you've clicked the wrong definition or uh, you didn't click OK fast enough after you turned ignition on. But right now we're just downloading. It's 88%. Try not to mess with any of the stuff that's plugged up. If you've ever heard the terminology of bricking your ECU, you basically interrupt the process of it actually pulling right there and you can kind of cause some issues. But now we have the actual ROM on the side and then you go to file, save ROM as, and then you can put it on like, you know, Corey's XT base map and you save it into your computer. And now you see all the different options. If you look right here, this is a, a, the actual Carberry ROM. So you have different things in here like anti-lag, launch control, no lift to shift, um, flex fuel stuff and whatnot. So you got all kinds of different options, so much more options with Carberry than you do anything like a stock ROM. So um, I've already flashed it for the base map like we talked about in the last one here, so that's why it already has Carberry ROM on there. So that's actually how you pull the ROM. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how to take this ROM, and let's just say we adjusted the boost. Um, I haven't yet. I'll do that later on, but and then we're going to upload the map into the actual thing. So if you look right here, you have the red one. So the blue one is, is pulling the ROM. And then the red one is, is uploading the ROM. And if you put your cursor over there, you can actually see read from ECU's flash memory. You can see write currently loaded ROM image to ECU's. And you can actually do test writes. Test write to make sure that the ROM that you're actually downloading is the correct one. And then you can actually compare currently loaded ROM to ECU's flash memory. So you can compare ROM and make sure that you're going to try to upload um, a compatible map to your actual car but yeah we're gonna go ahead and push this red one and then the ignition I kept it on the whole time but yeah ignition on click OK and then you're literally uploading the map into your to your ECU that's pretty much it so right here boom as we're going through and we're downloading it right okay now it shows OK successful so we're gonna click OK and then we're gonna go back to ROM Raider I'm gonna unhook the green connectors from underneath the car then turn off make sure you turn it off completely and then now connecting reading data now we are logging the ecu and its parameters when you go and you do something like an e-tune for example you're going to be able to get this list from your tuner He's going to tell you specifically, I want you to log AFR connection one, correction one, AFR learning, which is short term and long term, what your OEM AFR is reading, closed loop versus open loop fueling, your engine load, all these different the RPMs, knock sensors. He's going to give you a list of all these things that you're going to end up clicking on this side right here with the ignition on and, and you can save this profile and uh, you don't have to click them every single time you want to do data logs, it'll open up. You do it over and over again. Sometimes it's quick. Sometimes you'll get, you know, four or five maps, you know, from your tuner and it'll be dialed in. Sometimes you have to uh, do it multiple times, like a bunch of times, like nine, 10, sometimes 20 revisions sometimes. But in my experience, I've learned that 
nine times out of 10, the more revisions it is, it's usually some type of mechanical issue. It's not the tuner's fault. It's usually something like you got to do a boost leak test or your math was bad or those types of things. So if you're going to do a tune, it's really smart to do mass airflow sensor, get a new one, um, do new plugs. Um, if you have a GC8 or an older model, a fuel pump is going to be really smart. A, a must, depending on what type of turbo or injectors you're running too. So uh, just make sure it's really mechanically sound. Like do what you can to test it, make sure everything is good. That's gonna make it easier for you and the tuner um, if there's less issues that you're running into during the tune. Because if you're having to stop in the middle of a of a session or if you're having, you know, to, to make sure that you're, you don't have a boost leak, you know, it's just gonna be time between revisions, so. But yeah, ECU flash, ROM Raider, Tatrix cable, Look for the jumper underneath your dash and make sure that you get the right jumper. And then go through those processes. You're pulling data. You're giving the data to your tuner. He's going to make your adju those adjustments based off of what parts you have. He's going to send you that map. You're going to take that map. You're going to put it on your ECU. And then you're going to use ROM Raider to data log it. And he's going to look. All right, cool. Your idling is good. Do a drive log. And he's going to guide you in baby steps to make sure that the car is riding and driving per properly, not knocking, not running lean and uh, those types of things. I didn't go into detail about the actual wideband settings in it or not settings, but just the setup in general. We have an external setup. We got this also again, shout out to Wandering Gaijin. He got this set up so we can actually just attach it to the exhaust tail and we can do the AFRs and, and wide open throttle pulls that way. All right, so if you want to know more or if you have more questions or if you even want to see more content, like, hey, this is great, but can you get, go into more detail about this? Like the anti-lag setup or the launch control setup and we'll continue to make more videos if you guys want to and uh, get into more details about the settings. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, Oh, that was like perfect, it's powering off.